Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, well, popular request stuff. You've asked me to cover some of the big boxes that are out of print, that are no longer available, and, and I'm happy to do it because, you know, one of the missions that I see is, is sort of my goal in life um, is, to, is to document what the industry was doing. You know, what has been available, what is available, whether it's any good or not. Um, and these boxes were a really convenient way to get through a vast amount of repertoire very quickly. And that's what I plan to do. So you wanted the Munch box and the Reiner box and you wanted the living stereo stuff. That's all just RCA. And then, you know, various other things that were issued before. And, and I'm happy to do them. I really am. I'm happy to talk about this stuff to the extent that I've heard it well enough to talk about it. And most of it, most of it I have over the years. And so what the heck? Let's let's do some of it. And I just hesitate. Um, my only hesitation was because these things are out of print. They may come back. Now, they do get reissued periodically. You know, they get reprinted in some sort of cycle that nobody knows about and issued on a schedule that the labels don't want to tell us about and they don't want to promote them or let anyone know that they exist. But, uh, hey, what can I tell you? You can keep your eyes out and see. So first, we're going to start with... I mentioned this a couple videos ago. Uh, Fritz Reiner, the Fritz Reiner Chicago Symphony Orchestra Complete Album Collection. Oh boy, is this a lot of stuff. Um, and it's it's quite wonderful, actually. Um, I think the easiest way to do it, to be honest with you, um, would not to be disc by disc, although these are original jackets and they look very nice. There's 63 CDs in here. Kill me now. Um, 63 CDs. And, you know, for example, here's, you know, they look like that. Charming, you know, very nice. Um, and they're, they're, well, let's just do them. Um, but the, the collections, the way that they're filled on the, uh, you know, in the actual discs doesn't actually match what they say is inside, you know, because these are original jackets. And if they decided to make the CD better by adding things that so was in the original album, you won't see it here. So that will not allow me to cover the entire 63 disc extravaganza. Although, you know, I, sometimes I think most of these were reissued more or less in close to their original configurations because uh, they can sell more discs that way. So uh, anyway, let's do it. That Let's do it by... Booklet. Nice hardcover little booklet. It's very sweet of them to do it. Now, I have to say one other thing. Reiner, let's talk about Reiner a little bit. Reiner was an incredible perfectionist. He was kind of a, a, a sadist as well. He liked to torture his players. We've talked about this before. I mean, the, the stories are famous, especially him versus his first trumpeter, Bud Herseth, who actually out Reinered him in Alzheimer's Rock, Zarathustra and other things because he was just so good and Reiner couldn't get the better of him. But um, he was kind of mean and extremely dictatorial, and conductors were in those days because unions were weak, and they were able to uh, do whatever they wanted. And, you know, and you did what the conductor wanted, or else you got fired right there. Bang, boom, you were gone. And and that was a very hard way to live. There was a certain amount of edge of your seat tension and terror if you were a member of an orchestra back in those days. Um, and Reiner was in Chicago from, what, 55 to about 60, 63 or so, 62, 63, at which point he left and dropped dead. Um, so it was an amazing, amazing legacy, a wonderful inflection point in the history of recordings. Just so you know what it looks like, here they are, all these wonderful LPs that we can drool over, or LPs, I mean CDs, they were LPs. So let's start. Richard Strauss. All of Reiner Strauss is classic stuff. We know it. We've talked about it a million times. We have the original 1955 um, Alzo Sprach Zarathustra, 1954 or 55, somewhere in there, and and Salome's Dance. CD2 is Ein Heldenleben. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, the reference Heldenleben? Probably. We have to see, don't we? We will be back to talk about that at some point it's very soon. Brahms, Piano Concerto Number 1 with Arthur Rubinstein. Well, isn't that nice? Rubinstein was a great Brahms pianist. People don't remember. You know, I mean, he's got a reputation for doing like some Rachmaninoff and like Frenchy things. But his favorite composer was Brahms and he was, he was there. I mean, like around when Brahms was around. So um, that's, uh, oh, look at this. It's, it's. It's, it's an interesting picture of Reiner and and, uh, and Hitler. No, it's Toscanini, pardon me. 
There they are. Aren't they cute? Look at that. There we go. Can you see that? There we are. Fabulous. You get like pictures of the booklet. So Rubenstein, Reiner, Brahms, one. Very good performance, by the way. Uh, oh, Rolf Lieberman, Concerto for Jazz Band and Orchestra. Isn't that interesting? With the Salter Finnegan Orchestra and the Chicago Symphony. And Richard Strauss's Don Juan, the perfect coupling. The Strauss is amazing. Reiner did it twice, and they're both fabulous. Uh, Beethoven Eroica. Uh, now, Reiner's Beethoven is a little bit more... Um, well, controversial, let's put it that way. Reiner was known as something of a cold fish. You know, I mean, he got the discipline, the iron tight fisted discipline, but he wasn't always somebody who you look for, for, you know, gouts of romantic passion sort of thing. Um, so you had to go with his approach. I happen to think that the passion is certainly there. Um, certainly the tension is there. The dynamism is there. Um, and I enjoy his Beethoven. I really do. Brahms Violin Concerto with Yasha Heifetz. Well, you know, what is there to say? Um, that's a classic. Tchaikovsky First Piano Concerto with Emil Gillels. Well, that's a hot number. When was the last time you listened to it, huh? Huh? Fabulous. Mozart, Divertimento 17, and Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. Well, never known much for his Mozart. Reiner, Reiner did more than you think. And it actually... You know, one of the, the, the sort of truisms we say about these people is, well, they anticipated the period instrument movement because their, their Mozart is, is well-drilled and exciting and sharp and, and not sort of schmoozy and romantic and mushy. The fact of the matter is most Mozart was not schmoozy and romantic and mushy. Maybe Bruno Walters a little bit, but the bottom line is that people understood that the classical repertoire was a different style. And they did their best to play the music in that style as they understood it. And so, you know, don't be surprised. I mean, you know, nothing that these people discovered later was really much of a discovery, actually. Uh, Bartok, Concerto for Orchestra. Well, Reiner was a great Bartok guy. And this Concerto for Orchestra is quite famous. I mean, it's, it was always very, very highly regarded. I find his Bartok to be a little on the cool side. But, I mean, there's no denying how marvelously done it is. More Richard Strauss, Electra Scenes with Inga Bork. That's one whole disc now. It used to be on CD originally. It was coupled with the Salome excerpts with Inga Bork. Boy, this is something else. The orchestral playing on this recording is beyond phenomenal. I mean, Electra's Dance of Death is just, it's just staggering. It really is. Then Strauss, Bourgeois Gentilhomme, and Salome's Final Dance, Final Dance, Final Scene, all 17 minutes of screaming and yelling. Beautiful, beautiful recordings. Beethoven 7 and Fidelio. Uh, very good. It's very, very good performance. I always liked this 7th. I really did. Um, it has that energy and, and the rhythm. Rhythm. It's got to have rhythm. Uh, Tchaikovsky, 1812 Overture. Okay, there aren't canons, but the playing's great. Liszt, Mephisto Waltz, Weinberger, Polka and Fugue, Bartered Bride Overture, Dvorak's Carnival Overture. I mean, Reiner just aced all this stuff. There is something wonderful about hearing what they call light music, or pops music, played to a fairly well. And you could always count on Reiner to do that. Uh, Rachmaninoff, Piano Concerto Number 2 with Arthur Rubinstein. Oh, this was fantastic. And they've, they've decoupled it, which really pisses me off because the, the truth of the matter is uh, it was originally coupled with like the Paganini Rhapsody or something like that or some other concerto, and now they've made it all by itself on a single disc. That's how they make more money. Rachmaninoff, Paganini Rhapsody with Rubinstein and Reiner, one of the great ones. It's, it's insanely wonderful. Um, and Faya, Nights in the Gardens of Spain with the San Francisco Symphony and Enrique Yorda, also phenomenal. What a great record that is. Oh, gosh, it's fantastic. Uh, Johann Strauss, too, and Carl Maria von Weber and Joseph Strauss and Richard Strauss, Rosen Cavalier Waltzes. You know, the usual... Usual Blue Danube, Kaiser Waltz, Morgan Blätter, things like that, waltzes. Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto with Heifetz and Reiner. Ha ha, you know. Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto 1 and the Strauss Burlesque with Byron Janus. The late, great Byron Janus. Absolutely phenomenal. Classic. Strauss, Symphonia Domestica. Nobody ever cared until Reiner recorded it, and he did it very well. More Mozart, the Linz Symphony, number 36, Symphony 39, 40, and 41. Now, I have to confess, I, I 
imprinted on this Jupiter symphony. And the reason was because Haydn's 88th was the coupling on LP. And the Haydn 88 blew me away. The Mozart, not so much. But I like the Mozart. I still like the Mozart because it's very swift. It was a it was it was interesting. You know, he it has a very modern sound to it, somewhat steely. You know, the opening, usually it's dum ba da dum ba da dum da 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 not here, it's dum ba da dum ba da dum da 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 bum ba da dum ba da dum ba da 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 yum bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum bum I just like it that way. And I still do. What can I tell you? Uh, Prokofiev, Lieutenant Kije. Oh, great. Stravinsky, Song of the Nightingale. I mean, these were all just classic living stereo sonic spectaculars. And they still are. Uh, Brahms, Piano Concerto Number 2 with Emil Gillels and Jano Starker as the cello solo. <whistles> yeah, amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. The Reiner Sound, CD24, we're up to. Um, Ravel, Rhapsody Espanol, Pavan for a Dead Princess, and Rachmaninoff, The Isle of the Dead. I mean, all of this romantic orchestral blockbuster stuff is just amazing. There's, there's just no reason not to love it. There really isn't. You may have your own favorite, but who cares? Oh, Pictures in an Exhibition, another knockout. Okay, Brahms Third Symphony and Tragic Overture. Uh, very, very good. Really, I mean, a Brahms third, the one that most people screw up. Reiner doesn't at all. It's, it's... Tchaikovsky Potatique. Well, you might want your Potatique whipped up to a greater lather, but um, boy, it's awfully well played. Debussy Iberia, Ravel Valls Noble et Sentimental, and Albarada del Gracioso. Yes. Dvorak, New World Symphony, also excellent. Um, uh, Spanish stuff. Oh, I love this Spanish stuff. Granados, the intermezzo from Goyesca's Falla, interlude and dance from La Vida Breve. Uh, El Sombrero de Tres Picos, suite number two. Bits of Iberia, orchestrated by Arbos, including the Fête Dieu à Seville. <sighs> yeah, baby, ooh, do me. It's incredible. I mean, the, the Falla interlude and dance is just like no one else ever did it. It's incredible. Hovana, Symphony Number no. Two, Mysterious Mountain. Stravinsky, Divertimento from The Fairy's Kiss. Another classic. I mean, I, this is going to be very boring because so many of these recordings are just iconic for what they are. Uh, Tchaikovsky, what's this? 1812 Overture again. Um, Mendelssohn, The Hebrides, Liszt, Mephisto I, Brahms, Tragic Overture. Um, let's see, wait a minute. Note, the 1812 Overture and Mephisto Waltz were previously released on mono. And Okay, fine. Whatever. I don't know. Rossini Overtures. Oh, one of the classic Rossini Overture discs. Perfect composer for Reiner as he was for Abato, because Reiner was, Reiner was so meticulous, so detailed. William Tell, Scala di Seta, Il Signor Bruschino, Il Barbiere di Sevilla, La Gazza Ladra, and La Cenarentola. In La Gazza Ladra, you've got that tune. Da 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 with the horns going boop. Da 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 boop. Da, 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 da. And I had a friend who was a horn player. He's a wonderful horn player and a terrific guy. He used to manage HMV and he worked for the record labels. Damon Scobo. Hi, Damon, if you're watching. Um, and he was really into the Reiner Rossini album. And he was the one who, who keyed me into the wonders of Rossini's horn parts, the little details that Rossini touches in that that conductor like Reiner always managed to get. And you hear it, you hear it wonderfully here. Beethoven V, Coriolan Overture. Okay, there are better Beethoven Fifths out there. Um, I, it's good, you know, but you have your own choice. I don't worry about it. Mahler IV with Lisa Della Casa. Oh, this is a good Mahler IV. It really is. It has that that incredible clarity of texture. Lisa Della Casa is sort of so-so as a soloist. She's not bad. Um, not great, but boy, boy, is it a fine performance orchestrally. Bartok, Music for Strings, Percussion, and Celesta, still one of the most amazing things anyone ever did, even with the tiny dropout at the climax of the first movement. It was a tape thing. They can't do anything about it, sadly. Um, and the Hungarian sketches. Das Lied von der Erde. It's a pity Reiner didn't do more Mahler with Maureen Forrester and Richard Lewis. This is one of the great Das Lied von der Erdes, and it never got acknowledged as such. The singing is marvelous. Maureen Forrester is just terrific. Richard Lewis is very good. And the orchestral playing is sine qua non. 
really fabulous. Heiden 88, there it is, my Heiden 88. It's all alone on one disc, 21 minute disc. Really? You know, I don't like that performance so much anymore um, because I think there have been many better ones, but it's the one that got me into Haydn. So I, I, I have, I, I give it props. I still do. Strauss Don Quixote with Antonio Yanigro and Milton Previs. Um, it's, of course, you know, Strauss and, and Reiner. It's great. Mozart, 25th Piano Concerto and Don Giovanni Overture with Andrei Tchaikovsky, piano, and Fritz Reiner. Well, I mean, the 25th Concerto was never done. Um, very, at least not very frequently. I, Zell did it, right? Yes, he did with uh, Circuit, I believe. But very, very few people were doing 25, and, and it's a wonderful piece, so it's good to hear that with Andrei Tchaikovsky. Whatever happened to him? Maybe one of you guys can tell me. Prokofiev Nevsky, Alexander Nevsky. Oh, well, that's exciting. I mean, they yell and scream and shriek and carry on, and, and, and it's, it's very, very loud. Oh, more Russian stuff. Kabalevsky, Tchaikovsky, Bard, and Mussorgsky, Night on Bear Mountain. Oh, is this exciting. Wow, baby. Tchaikovsky, the March miniature from the suite number one, and Glinka's Ruslan and Ludmila. Really, really great. Schumann Piano Concerto with Van Cliburn. Famous Van Cliburn disc. Not my favorite Schumann, but there's nothing terrible about it. Tchaikovsky Nutcracker excerpts, a whole disc of them, so you get like a lot of it, which is nice for a change. Oh, baby. Respighi Pines and Fountains of Rome. Oh, my God. There's never been better. Just put away your other Respighi records. This was the one that did it. And the Sonics. Holy crap. The Sonics. Unbelievable. Scheherazade. Another stunner. Rimsky Korsakoff, Scheherazade. Wagner stuff. Oh, this was wonderful, too. Meister Singer von Nuremberg. The Preludes, Dance of the Apprentices, Entry of the Masters. A whole little suite. It's lovely. And Gutter Dammerung, Dawn, Dawn and Siegfried's Rhine Journey, and Funeral Music. Uh, yeah, Debussy La Mer. This was the La Mer, I think, where they broke their tam-tam. Um, famously, they smashed their tam-tam so hard that it busted. And it's really, you can tell, you can really tell. It's a cool La Mer, but boy, is it exciting. Um, Don Juan, the other Don Juan, the second one, a little bit, 20 seconds slower a little bit, but boy, it's better recorded. And astonishingly well played, and it's still 16 minutes and a little bit. That's the tempo. All you people out there who take 18 plus minutes, like Herbert von Karajan and Michael Dilson Thomas, 16 minutes is enough. Uh, more Strauss. Yeah, okay, more Strauss stuff. It's fine. Schubert, symphonies eight and five. Um, nice. Not what most people would consider to be the ultimate in Schubert interpretation, but you can't complain about it. You know, it's, it's this thing. You listen to it and you say, okay, this is my favorite. These are the great ones. And you listen to this and you say, okay, well, Reiner wasn't known for doing that music particularly well. Um, it wasn't that he did it badly. It just wasn't his, his fach, you know, his, his, his reputation wasn't hanging on that music, but you can't say he did it poorly. You just can't. I mean, it's just at a level. It was like the Zell box too. I mean, these guys just operated um, at a level of achievement that they never fell below. And so it doesn't really matter what they played. You knew it was going to come out at a certain very, very high level, no matter what. List, Totentanz, Rachmaninoff, Piano Concerto Number 1 with Byron Janis, a classic. The Totentanz is one for the ages. Wow, it's fabulous. Uh, Beethoven, Emperor Concerto with Van Cliburn. I'm another for your Van Cliburn collection. And the Brahms, Piano Concerto Number 2. All of these were recorded with rather rather forward piano balances. The CDs, I think, have fixed it a little bit, but they're still, you know, and, and Clyburn himself, well, I mean, he was decent. I don't find him to be all that interesting compared to the competition, but, um, you know, he was a major thing back then. Beethoven, Symphony Number no. 9. I am not wearing a tie. I'm sorry. I apologize to the great master, but, um, you know, in order to do that, I would have to do this whole video that edited in a bit with me in the tie, and I, I just don't have the patience to do it right now. You'll forgive me, please. Anyway, um, it, I like this ninth. It's a very tight, exciting, forceful, intense ninth. And the Adagio, 16 minutes and a bit. It's just right. It's really just right. The choral singing's terrific. The sonics are great. It's, it's wonderful to listen to. It's got Phyllis Curtin, Florence Coplift, John McCollum, and Donald Graham bass. And uh, there's nothing not to love. Margaret Hillis was the chorus master of the Chicago Symphony then, and she remained there for 
all of Schulte's tenure, just about. I mean, she was a, a wonder of her own, a great choral trainer. Uh, symphony number one. Oh, Beethoven's first is, you know, also in there. Oh, look, and here they are. Ta-da! That's the whole the whole shebangy there. That must have been some night. Let me tell you, that was really really great. I mean, that's Margaret Hillis is, is up there was up there with Reiner by the way. 1959, prior to a performance of Alexander Nevsky. Well, okay, it's not Beethoven's Ninth. It's Alexander Nevsky, but same difference. Uh, the New Zarathustra, the second recording of Also Sprach Zarathustra, which is better than the first one and better sound sounding. Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto with Van Cliburn. Um, that was like a thing for him. I never liked that performance. Um, Beethoven fourth piano concerto with Van Cliburn. Um, again, I, you know, there are better out there. It's nice, though. That's a nice lyrical performance. And Clyburn was a, a soft-edged pianist. He does the fourth nicely. Uh, Pastoral Symphony, the Beethoven Pastoral Symphony, quite beautiful um, and much better than you might think. Um, the scene at the, by the brook is slow. 14 minutes, Carl Böhm-like. I think that's a little on the slow side, personally. Uh, let's see, Berlioz, Nuit d'été, and Faya, El Amor Brujo, and that's with Leontine Price. And boy, does she get down and dirty in the Spanish stuff. You know, she had a chest register that was like entirely detached from the rest of her voice. And so when she got into it, it was kind of like another person were singing. Um, it sounds really, really kind of interesting. Um, Haydn, Symphony 101 and 95. Fritz Reiner and his symphony orchestra. He's no longer with Chicago. Um, these are early, early versions, and they're 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 zippy and charming enough. Schumann Piano Concerto and Liszt Totentanz with Byron Janis. Again, why is why are we getting this twice? Let me see. Recording Orchestra Hall Chicago, 1959, 19. Yeah, again, there should be some little note, something there. Well, maybe one was mono and one wasn't, or one was. Oh, one has the Schu uh, the Schumann. The other one didn't have the Schumann, did it? It was the Liszt Totentanz with Byron Jan and something else. Rachmaninoff first, I think, right? Yeah, so you get two Totentanzes. What the hell? Can't have too much of that. And the bonus CD with Andrei Tchaikovsky of the Chicago Symphony and with Bach's harpsichord concerto first released in Japan and the Star Spangled Banner. So you have the Star Spangled Banner, Bach's uh, fifth harpsichord concerto, the F minor, um, and on piano, by the way, and Fritz Reiner discussing Beethoven's seventh for 59 seconds. Big deal. And the, the beginning of the third movement of Beethoven's seventh, which I guess is what he was discussing. I never listened to this, actually. I'll have to go back and do it. I mean, I just never cared. So uh, I'll have to listen to what he has to say for 59 seconds. And with that, my friends, you have the Reiner box. Now, do I need to tell you that you, you want to get it if it comes back? I mean, really, it's it's like the cell box, like the Ormandy box, like the, these are astonishing achievements, really astonishing achievements. Some of the Carrion boxes, some of these other things, I mean, the Jochum boxes, there's some conductors. I mean, you just want to hear what they did and to have their career in a box. Doesn't he look like Bela Lugosi? I mean, he looks, he looks like a vampire. He really does. Very Hungarian, you know, <laughs> scary guy. He was, he was like this tall. I mean, he was like, you know, as tall as my cat. But but people were uh, afraid of him. And you get to hear why. And it was worth it. It was. Maybe not if you were there at the time, sitting through it, or employed by him. But otherwise, yeah, for us and for posterity, it was a go. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care. <laughs>